few weeks ago, DK from My Lawns contacted me and asked me if I would host a show. He had this idea of getting three or four guys together and just talk about lawn care, talk about different subjects, and uh, just kind of just kind of talk and, and share ideas. And uh, I was real honored that he asked me to host this show. So what we did, guys, is we got uh, Sea Breezy, we got DK, and we got Sherry from Small Lawns together. And today we talked about a few different topics. We talked about uh, uniforms. We talked about uh, charging customer by the hour or by the job. Uh, we talked about uh, we talked to Sherry about uh, being female in the industry. We talked about the importance of having a good dealer in your neighborhood. So these are some of the things we talked about, and I hope you guys find this information helpful. And uh, thank you. All right, well, I got DK here from Mighty Lawns. How you doing, DK? Awesome, man. How about you? I'm doing good. We got Sherry from Small Lawns here. Sherry, how are you? I'm great. And then... No other than Chuck C. Breezy. What's up, Chuck? What's up? All right. C. Breezy. C. Breezy. <laughs> All right. Well, one of the topics I wanted to talk about today, guys, was charging by the hour or charging by the the job. What do you guys What do you guys think about that? Let's start with Sherry. I charge per the mo, and then I charge hourly for anything bush trimming, mulching anything else hourly because I've got burned too many times and I just figured that way it works out best the customer knows what they're paying and I know what I'm getting. Now Sherry do you have any problems with uh, customers uh, not liking your hourly rate or anything like that? Um, yeah sometimes they look at you know hourly rate and go wow that's a lot. Yeah, but, you know, you have to explain to them, that's just not all going in my pocket. That has to cover, you know, license, gas, all my expenses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if they want to pay, okay. If not, I got plenty of business. I got somebody else that will pay. Yeah. That's true. DK, what's your thoughts on it? Well, I want to say something. And, and, you know, I know you guys can help me out with this. And we all do it. But why do we have to let them know, you know, why we're charging X, Y, and Z? You know what I mean? Like, why can't we just give them the price and then that's that's it? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, I understand. When you, when you go buy a car, you know, you know what you're buying. You know, and, it, and if you're coming to the to the property with, let's just say your portfolio or your or your body of work, you know, work that you've done in the past, you know, why do we have to sell so much? You know, okay, well, I'm going to charge you five hundred dollars for this. Why do we have to? You know, okay, well, you know, I'm charging this much because I've got to pay a couple of workers, and then this part has to go, you know, for gas and, and the upkeep of the equipment. You know, I I wish I really hope one day that customers can just take the price and just hey, I'm confident in paying it, and that's it. Without yeah. all the extras, you know, it's like when you go get your hotel room. I mean, you pay you two or three hundred dollars a night, and that's it. Yeah. You know, I mean, of course, you you know, you you want to know about your complimentary breakfast and stuff like that. But I mean, I just I feel as though because we're like the 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 low man on the totem pole, we have to always, you know, okay, well, it's this much because we're doing this and this and this, and this. I'm just I I'm I'm at the point in my life now where I'm like. This is my price. You see my body of work. You know, really take it or leave it. Yeah. You know, so because so what's you already know by what I charge you to mow your lawn, you know you're getting a discount anyhow. Yeah. So which you know, one do you like, prefer, like DK? The strong job that that I had last year. You know, the, I don't know. That that's just my opinion, though. Maybe that's because of low ballers and there's no industry standard. Yeah. Well, Chuck, Chuck, what's your opinion on it? I'm a, I, I bid by the job. As far as breaking it down for a customer that might have a question about my charging, I give them a price. This is what this is what you're going to pay for mowing. This is what you're going to pay for a bush trim or a mulch job. If they don't like it, they don't have to hire me. But I don't break down what my operating costs are to a to a customer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just seems like we kind of get stomped. And I'm sure everybody's been there. Like right at the end, the the customer's looking at the the, the little estimate and is like, 
wow, five hundred dollars for just this, but they're not even going out. They're not the ones doing the work. And you, and if you, and if you're smart, you know what your competitors are charging in your area. So you know, you know that they know that we all know that they're getting a deal. So why go back and forth? But I think Sherry touched on it. It's because of the low ball. They want to, how how low can he go? How low can he go? You know. Well, my uh, feeling on it. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say. Uh, uh, my feeling on it is I I've never charged by the hour. I don't think I ever will. Uh, and I've gotten burned a few times, but uh, I, I think you're more likely to get a job if you just give the customer a price and they know that's exactly what they're going to pay instead mm -hmm. of saying, uh, you know, $50 an hour or whatever. And now they're kind of watching you like a hawk, making sure you're not taking breaks, you're not goofing off or anything like that. But, yeah. you know, if you if you tell a customer 50 bucks an hour and it might take three hours, and it ends up taking five hours, well, they're not going to be very happy with you. So yeah. uh, I think it's better. And I I kind of think as, you know, we're kind of, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're professionals in our industry. We're, you know, even though some of us are just starting out, we're kind of professionals. So I think as, you know, if, if I'm a client, I would expect you to know how long it's going to take to do that job. Even though a lot of us don't, even I don't. I mean, I, like I said, I've gotten screwed plenty of times, but I kind of take it and just kind of go with it. No, I'm with you on that, on the uh, the hourly. I've hosed myself over on a bid before, but, you know, I just take it as a, you know, a learning lesson. It gets me uh, better at uh, pricing myself. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the way I feel, Chuck, is, you know, it's, Pricing, especially cleanups and uh, all that kind of stuff. Everybody's kind of in the general uh, area as far as lawn mowing goes. I mean, that's those are pretty easy to price and be be within uh, the standard. But uh, leaf cleanups and just spring and fall cleanups and all that kind of stuff, it, it takes practice. And you know, I just think you're more likely to get jobs if you tell a customer, "Look, this is the price." And this will be the price when I'm done, no matter how long it takes me. Another question I had was uh, pricing shrubs. Do you guys price shrubs by per the shrub? Do you guys charge by like per the per the trim, per the shrub, or just by the total job? I do about the total job. But one of my workers who had way more experience than I did, he would charge, he suggested I charge per shrub. So, which would have been a lot more than what the customer would have expected to pay. Mm -hmm. But it, it would have made my pocket very happy. <laughs> I, can, I can say that. I mean, you know, he, he was talking about, you know, $50 per shrub. Wow. I was like, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Man, if you can get away with that, it? go for it. Yeah. But, you know, like, and y'all seen them, it, it was dug. If y'all been looking at the long code video, it, it, it was dug. And so I told him, I said, well, why are you working for me, man? Yeah, really. <laughs> Sherry, what's That's your what thoughts on that? Um, I initially tried doing that, charging by the bush, and I didn't get the job. So mm. I just went with the hourly. Oh, when I put my numbers together in my head, I'm doing it by the shrub, but the customer just gets the, the job. Yeah. By the job. Yeah. That's kind of that's kind of the way I do it. Is in my head I do it by, you know, ten bucks a shrub or five or fifteen. But I just kind of estimate how long it's going to take me in my mind to do the whole job. But you know, actually in my mind I'm breaking it down by the per the shrub so I can add up all the time, and then I just you know whatever my time is worth, whatever I charge by the hour, then that's what they get. Yeah. And then normally if it's a uh, if it's a customer that's going to be weekly service. I usually uh, cut quite a bit off of a, a trimming job for them. If it's just a one time come in and do the shrubs and never see me again, then they get, you know, it's a full price job. Yeah. They get it. DK, what's your thoughts on that? Do you give uh, do you give discounts like that to regular customers? You know what? I get I give discounts which Ryan, you always do me like this, man. I have shows that are going to come out <laughs> and you always put me in a position where I tell on myself. But listen, I give not only I, I I give discounts to I I gave discounts to all my customers because it was my my thought process process was 
this is going to be a lifer, meaning I'm going to have this customer for the long haul. Mm -hmm. And I got burnt several times. And, and I have some wild stories that I want to touch on. But, you know, first of all, you touched on something about time. I like to look at the property, and, and like you said, in my mind, I like to price it by how long it's going to take me. Because I've gotten so good at this, I like to call myself like a master at this. I've gotten so good, I know it won't take me long. But then when I involve other people, like the workers, I always seem to get burnt. Mm -hmm. Like one job that should only take six hours, one night it took us 11 or 12 hours, which I have a video of that too. So yeah, I like to, I like, in my mind, I like to charge by how long I think I'll be there. And in my mind, I'm dancing. I got all this dancing on. Yes, I'm gonna come away like a fat rat. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the night, I'm losing. Yeah. And I hate that feeling. I'm losing. So yeah, you know, like you said, in, in your mind, yes, you should charge. You know, by how long you think it's gonna take. You know, like with the mulching job. Okay, how much mulch am I gonna need? You know, basically how much product I'm gonna have to buy. Um, how long will it take me to put that product down? But it. it it, a lot of times it was horrendous last year, you know, because like I said, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, it's only going to take this amount of time, but then you throw two knuckleheads in there and it takes a lot longer and then you end up getting burnt. Now, the workers win because they get paid by the hour. I just, a lot of times, I, I came up as the loser. The show, the biggest losers, wasn't about losing weight. I forgot I forgot what the question was. I'm sorry. I kind of went on a rant there. Now. <laughs> I apologize. I man. did. I was gonna. I was gonna move on to Sherry and get her thoughts on it, and I forgot the actual question. Uh, discounts. Yes. Do you office? give Do you give your regular customers discounts on uh, other stuff? Um, like you know, I go by the hour, but then if I look at the amount and it's somebody that treats me really well, if they keep That's me working good. all year long, then I might knock something off the price. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For me on this one, I kind of. Uh, I do give discounts for people that uh, that I know are going to be around for a while, that uh, are going to continue to make me money week after week. I, you know, not a huge discount, and I don't even know that, you know, I don't even tell them I'm giving them a discount. I just kind of, I just kind of make it to where they are, uh, they they know they're kind of getting a deal, and uh, but, you know, I don't I don't really blame the people that don't. I mean, we're here for a. For you know a service, and however long it takes us to do that service, then we should get paid for it. But I, I do give discounts every once in a while. So yeah, I, I probably would be the discount king. That's probably really what DK stands for, man. Discount king. There you go. <laughs> the discount king, man. I have to make a video on it. I am the discount king. I mean, I'm serious, man. I mean, because you know, it, it, like I said, it, it 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 starts off as I'm thinking I'm gonna come off like a fat rat. But then it never, ever works out that way. And the customer's like, man, thank God for you, man. And I'm thinking, yeah, you, you must have been tithing and praying for me to come right along your way because you're getting off like the fat rat, not me. Well, I did a, I did a job last year, DK. It was the first call I've ever gotten from anybody. And I get this job, and I touched on this in another video, but uh, it was a – she wanted to do – she wanted me to pull all of her weeds and uh, all that stuff in her flower beds. So I go over there and I look at it and I charge her a hundred bucks. Okay. And I so underbid that job. It wasn't even funny. It took three of us like six full hours to do all of her beds. And she felt so bad. She ended up giving me 200. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But even, they even 200 wasn't even worth it. They will, you know, on, on the one job where we're, we're laying down the, um, those pay stones, um, I need to do better at knowing the titles of my of my videos, but it's an episode of Long Cold where we're, where we're, it might be. Um, uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take a guess, but anyway, we're laying down the pave stones. I charge 350 for the job because once again, I'm thinking, okay, only six hours. But that day we did two different jobs. We got to Mr. Aaron's property about 9:30 because he's on the same street as Scott. We didn't get done, man, until six o'clock. Six o'clock. But I will tell you, we got some free chicken, uh, some free soda. Uh, he's doing an extra hundred bucks, and it was worth it, man. You know, at the end of the day, it was worth it, man. Because when you love what you do, it's worth it's worth it. But hopefully this year I can make a little bit more profit. I'm 
really hoping on that. My big thing I discount, though, I do uh, run like prepay discounts. And I let everyone know if they want to prepay a season, I, I cut a pretty good discount for that. I run two uh, 15 mode. You know, if someone prepays a 15 mo, and if someone prepays a 30 mo, then I'll cut them pretty good discounts for those. Yeah, I actually had a I had a lady last year. I never even thought of it before, but I had a lady ask me last year uh, what what I would charge her if she prepaid for the full year. And yeah. uh, like I said, I hadn't even thought about it. So I just basically just you know took about how many mows I thought it, you know a year would take. And for us, it's around twenty four, twenty five, and uh, and I just added added up her, you know, her weekly mo, and then I gave her like a ten or fifteen percent discount. Yeah. Is that is that how you do it? Yeah, if they do a thirty mo, then I, I cut them a ten percent, and I'm finding property managers really uh, like to bite on that one. They like it. Yeah. Sherry, do you do uh, do you offer any discounts or anything? You're cheating, man. No, I bill monthly after I've already done the work. I mean, that's just how I've been doing it for years. Yeah. DK, do you offer full year discounts? No, I have not because I'm already offering them discounts. <laughs> so they get discounts every time I freaking come out there. But you're Sometimes the, you're they the... get a discount. Even if it's not in the, in the fine print, they get a discount. Yeah. And you know what? I've got one customer. He, he's going to look at this. He, he acts like he doesn't look at these shows, but I know he does because when I put stuff out, like the video I said, what customers say so they can avoid to uh, pay you, he says, you know, I don't want to be on none of your videos. I said, oh, so you're looking. No, I'm not looking. Well, you have to be looking. You know, he, he said, you know I, I really was out of town, Donald. I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. Next time, I, I would love to have my money under the mat and not get a phone call. You know, saying, "Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm out of town right now." You know, okay. Well, I really needed that money, but you know, it, it's all good. Like I said, DK now stands for the discount king, and you know, every time I come out, they get a discount. Well, if you're going to say that, if if you're going to be the discount king and you don't offer a full year discount, <laughs> there's something wrong with that. Yeah, you're right. right? <laughs> yeah, and you know, it, it. I I think customers like when they realize that you've underbid them. And then they give you, you know, an extra little bit of money and the pat on the back. I think they feel like the pat on the back will compensate for like that extra three hundred dollars you should have made off of them. Yeah. I mean, you both smile and you nod and you know, okay, well we'll see you next time, but they never call you again. Yeah, you know, those customers. I'm talking to you customers that's looking at this video right now. <laughs> y'all know who y'all are. I do not like the pat on the back. I want the extra money. The Robert De Niro. That's what I want to see in my pocket. Uh, I, I have to have it in my pocket. Yeah, there's not enough women in lawn care, that's for sure. How did how did how did Sherry get started in lawn care? I had an office job and um didn't like it and a friend was doing lawn care and I started on the weekends and I'm like, Hey, this is pretty cool. You know, this is just decent money here. And uh well, that's a ball. Football they came, right now. They came through and uh, offered me an early out to leave the government, and uh, so that's how I got into lawn care. How long have you been doing it? Uh, this will be 18 years now. Wow. Wow, awesome. And the best year I've had this past year. Good. Hopefully this year will be a little bit better than that one. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> well, I was going to ask DK a question, but since he ain't here, we'll just move on. Hey! <laughs> Don't, don't leave me now. Uh, we're going to talk about uniforms. Uniforms, all right. Versus not wearing uniforms, all right? Do you have uniforms? Do you think uniforms are important? I do not, but I am going with um, going to get some shirts, and I think it does make you look a little more professional. And uh, I got doing the postcards this year, too. That's This is the first year I've done the postcards. I'm trying having... to um, up what I'm getting paid. I'm not going to increase the amount of work. I just want to increase how much I'm earning. I got you. Are you having any luck with your postcard so far? I've been waiting. Right now, there's like a foot of snow on the ground. So uh, probably starting next week, I'll start sending them out. But I've already been out and scoped out the different neighborhoods and picked out certain blocks. That I'm gonna mail to, Good. and I'm going to as I people have recommended to market three times a year, 
which I've never done before. I've only done one time a year. So that's the game plan for this year. Well, good. Sounds like you got it going on. Well, I just did a video on uniforms. We know I wear uniforms. You look pretty spiffy in your no, uniform, I'll you tell you that. Uniforms are important, and I, I've got signed for with customers just because I have a uniform. I've had customers call me and want to meet me at their home so they can see what I look like, and they've seen the uniform, and then they send me for the whole season. All right, DK, I know you got some thoughts on this, man. Yeah, man, uniforms are very important uh, because of X, Y, and Z. No, but seriously. You know, the video that I did where, you know, it showed us, it showed Mighty Long's crew having uniforms, what we looked like, versus when we didn't have unis. Because a couple of workers you have that just simply don't want to put on shirts for whatever reason. But that's another story, you know, but. I feel like they're very important because, you know, it, it separates you. Because we have to be honest. Except we have competition out here. And even though there's a lot of fish in the sea, sometimes you want to be the biggest fish. You want to be the shark. And so it separates you. You know, I've gotten so many different clients just by my unit, even when I'm walking out to my mailbox. And that's, well, that's another video. I always get ahead of myself. But anyway, you can get so much more business. Um, and whatever you do, I always try to have on your uniform. I mean, I've gotten business, like I said, walking out to my mailbox, going to McDonald's. McDonald's, y'all got to pay me for that for saying y'all name, right? I'm not paying y'all, y'all pay me, okay? Um, going to pick up my kids from school, having, you know, it, it's like my identification. It's like, oh, okay, so that's what you do. You're in lawn and landscaping. Yes, I am. Versus just having on a regular T-shirt and jeans and saying, yeah, I own da-da-da lawn and landscaping, they, 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 the customers, potential clients tend to take me more serious when they see me in my uniform, for whatever reason. I don't look like Joe Blow. I look like I'm professional, even though sometimes I'm, I'm not when I get into shouting matches on the street. But it, it, it really does separate me. It gives them the impression that, hey, this is a professional company, and you know I, I feel confident in where I'm spending my money. So that's always been my take. And, you know, I have a story, a long story. I don't want to take up all the time. But, you know, I just, I, I'll never forget this story. It was back in Texas, man. And this was my first year doing it. And I had, I had this customer lady. I don't remember her name. But I had her for quite a while. At that point, maybe had her about three or four months. And when her plumber came over, I think he was either her plumber, yeah, her plumber or her, or her HVAC guy, one or the other. But I'll never forget this. I was walking back to my trailer. At that point, I had a Chevy Blazer and a 5x10 um, trailer, right? And I'm walking back to my, my, um, my vehicle. At that point, all I had was like a blue T-shirt and some black dickies and some sneakers. And I'll never forget this. He told the lady, he said, hey, is that, is that your long guy? And they both chuckled. And I just, I'll never, I think it hurt me so much that I made it a point that, you know what, I'm always going to have a uniform when I step out. I'll never forget that. I probably, I'm 32 now. I probably was 22 or 23. My first son was just born. So, yeah, 22 or 23. But I will never, ever forget that as long as I live. So that's why I try to spread the gospel. Get your uniforms because you don't want to run into that customer. The one customer that, I mean, and this lady had, had like a $400,000 home. She was a great paying customer. And then she didn't call me. She left an email, right? So get this. She leaves an email that I got after she told me this, but I went to perform um, my next mode for her home. She says, oh, Donald, you didn't get my email? No, ma'am, I didn't get it. Oh, well, I no longer need you. I went and bought me a mower at Home Depot. So oh. you know, I know what that was about, and that's why I prefer uniforms. And I've never had any issues when I'm in my uniform. When I'm not in my uniform, that's really when I become the discount king. Your perception is key. If you're not if you're not dressed like a professional, then they're not gonna they're not gonna treat you as a professional. That is very true. It's not just women in lawn care, it's the small guy in lawn care too. Mm -hmm. When I started out, I would go to get the equipment service and I would get ignored. Or if I was there to buy something, I would get ignored. I think part of it was the fact that I'm a woman, but it's also because I don't have five, ten crews. I'm just buying that one big piece of equipment a year. Mm -hmm. 
but I don't go back to those shops anymore. They don't treat me with respect when I go there. They're not getting my business. And so for the guys that are just starting out, you know, keep that in mind. If somebody's not going to give you the respect, don't give them your business. Yeah, that's a good point. Chuck, do you have a good relationship with your dealer? I, I use a couple different dealers. One I really like. Um, one I'm, I'm iffy on, but just with the equipment that they service, and since I have like one piece of freaking everything, I have to use different dealers in my area. But uh, I, I do have one that I like better dealing with than the other. Yeah, for me, I uh, you know a couple years ago when I was working for the company I used to work for, mowing for them, I'd go into my dealer. And this guy, he's a walker mower dealer. He's a Toro, right stander. I mean, he's got all the nice equipment. But he used to just, I mean, his service was horrible. And, uh, you know, we had to go to him because the company I worked for had an account there. Uh, and to be honest with you, I, I overpaid on my walker. I paid like four or $500 more to buy it from somebody else just so I didn't have to buy it from him. Because his customer service was so bad that... I didn't want to, if something went wrong with my mower, I didn't want to have to deal with him. And it's funny because now that he knows that I'm on my own and I don't work for that company no more, he is the nicest guy you can ever meet. <laughs> oh, of course. Because he wants my business. And uh, he knows he's still going to get his business from that other company, but he wants he wants my business. So now he every time I walk in there, he's just as nice as can be, which I appreciate. And uh, I do go to him now because we do have a good relationship. But at the time, I wouldn't, you know, like I said, I spent four or $500 more on a mower just not to buy it from him. So I think a good dealer is important to have. What about you, DK? You got a good dealer? Uh, yeah, Craigslist. So they started killing people. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm out of luck right now, man. <laughs> I'm out of luck. But yeah, seriously, Cra I mean, Craigslist, man, I would meet, I would meet tons of, uh, of cool people out here, man. Like I said, another thing that I would love to touch on is a lot of people, when they're starting out, they think that you have to have the big boy equipment to make a profit. And the truth of the matter is, you don't. Now, the aesthetics of it all, it, it, it is awesome. One second. It is awesome to have, but at the, at the same token, you can still make money with a 21-inch mower. You don't have to have your big boy equipment to make that profit. Now, when you start getting into your estate, you know, your estate size properties, those country clubs, for whatever reason, I guess they're lawn care pros, and even though they have, you know, the doctorate degrees and stuff, they know a lot about the lawn service, and they want to make sure you've got those beautiful mowers touching that grass. So, you know... To each his own, but to answer your question in a nutshell, my dealer was Craigslist, and until Craigslist beefs up some sort of security, uh, I won't be going to the Craigslist dealer uh, for a while. Sherry, are you, do you do all your mowing with push mowers? Uh, yeah, 21 inch, and then uh, since Toro came out with the Time Master, the 30 inch, and it's not a commercial mower, and it's had a lot of issues. It's uh, that Briggs and Stratton engine. I'm hoping that they will get that squared away. But, you know, I, I try to stick to small yard. That, you know, zero turn just wouldn't work in some of them. Yeah. And, you know, I'd have to do more yards, but some, some blocks I have five or six yards on the same block. So I'm not driving anywhere. Unload the equipment once and just go knock them out. And that's what I kind of, you know, tell people. You know, I'm, I'm not going to do damage to your yard with the zero turns. Yeah, yeah there's actually that's, that's, there's actually some yards that I do that I would rather push mow just because they're so, the yards are just so nice and they take so good care of them that I don't want to mess them up with a zero turn. You know, and you got these clients that, uh, that love to water the yard, you know, they'll water it two or three times every single day and that that yard is just always it's always soft it's always moist and when you put a you know a 600 pound mower or an 800 pound mower on it 
It almost yeah. doesn't matter how careful you are that you're gonna you're gonna mess it up. I like to thank C Breezy. C Breezy, thanks for coming on here and chatting with us, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me. C Breezy. C Breezy. Mighty Lons. DK, thanks, man. I right, appreciate man. it. Yeah, man. See you, little man. <laughs> Sherry, thank you very much. I appreciate a woman's perspective on this stuff. Thanks for inviting me.